Hi again this is John and in this video we're going to be talking about the 6502 family its registers um, the instruction set and the addressing modes of the 6502 the 6502 came in many different varieties um, originally starting with the 6502 was put, which was put in the VIC-20 um, it had a 16-bit address book and an 8-bit data bus. Um, this quickly followed by the Model A, Model B, which was put into the BBC Micros and the Ataris, and the Model C, which was put into the Atari 65E and 130. The Commodore 64 had the 6510, which had a 6-bit input-output port added to it, which allowed it to switch ROMs in and out of the memory. Um, and the 8500 was used by the last model 64. The 6502 has five registers. Uh, it has a program counter. This is used to let the uh, let the CPU remember where it is when it's running programs. It has an accumulator which can which can load and store data. Also be process by um, adding and subtracting and logical parameters. It has an X register which allows it to be used as an index. It has a Y register which is a second index and it also has a process register or status register. These five registers are actually on board the CPU so it's the fastest memory that can be used within the CPU. Now the process register or the status register has uh, a bit for each um, state. So you've got a negative bit which um, lets you, the, the programmer, know whether there was a uh, negative um, incident when you either add in, subtract in, uh, or stuff like that. You have an overflow, so if it went the other way this time, so it went too big, the number was too big for it to cater for. It has a break flag, which indicates whether it hit the BRK instruction. You can also work, put it in decimal mode, but this can only be used in ar uh, arithmetic instructions. It also has the interrupt disable flag. The did it was it equal or not equal to flag which is commonly known as the zero flag and the carry flag and this is used when you're adding or subtracting so if you if the number becomes too big for the byte or word it will put the one in the carry or if it subtracts and it goes below it will borrow from the carry if it's there the instruction set is in comparison the top level instruction set only 56 instructions now the 6502 is a, co a CISC chip which is a complex instruction set uh, computer chip compared to a RISC chip which is a reduced inst uh, instruction set the reason why it's a CISC chip is that even though it's only got 56 top level uh, instructions many of these instructions have different modes that allow you to address um, different areas of the, the the memory. So you can do do in one instruction in in the 6502 in SIS, which would take you many instructions if you was trying to do the equivalent on a RIS chip. So we're just going to go through the top level instruction sets here. So I've grouped them each of the instruction sets into categories. So we've Starting with the data transfer, we have um, the load accumulator from memory. We have which allows you to load a, a value into the accumulator from memory. Same with the LDX, which is load the X register with memory. You have the same with Y, so you can load the Y register with memory. You can also transfer between registers, so you can transfer the accumulator into the X registry and you can transfer the accumulator into the Y. You can also store, 
So you can store the acute what what you've got in the accumulator into a memory location, and you can do the same with the X register and the Y register. So it's store X and store Y. You can also transfer from the X register to the accumulator, and you can do the same with the Y register, the accumulator. So they're all data transfer functions. We've also got arithmetic functions, and we've got two of those, which is to add the memory with the accumulator, and if um, the overflows the accumulator, it will put it will set the carry flag, and we can sub subtract the memory from the accumulator. And if it goes lower than zero, then if the carry set if the carry is set, it will borrow from the carry. We have also uh, logical. Um, operation instructions so we've got the standard AND which will AND the memory with the accumulator we also have the standard OR which is OR the memory with the accumulator and we have the exclusive OR which does an exclusive OR with the accumulator and we will talk about these more in later videos uh, as you can see there, we have uh, shift and modify instructions. So the, f the first one is we can decrement a memory, a memory location by one. So if we tell it to decrement 0, 0,200, it will actually decrement it by one. So if you add a value of 22, it would uh, the end result would be 21. We can decrement the X register by one. We can decrement the Y register by one and we can logically shift left one bit a memory location or the accumulator and we can rotate left one bit the accumulator or memory location um, we will go in more detail in later videos for that and vice versa we can increment a memory location so if we take our memory location at 0200 which was now 21 and increment it it will put it back to 22 we can also increment the x register we can increment the y register by one and we can do logical shift right as well as rotate right so they're the counterparts of the uh, rotate left and logical shift left but like i say we'll go into this in later videos we, over, we also have some test instructions so we can compare the accumulator with memory and we, we can also test the bits in memory with the accumulator so instead of testing a number it actually tests the bits to, to, to see if they are both uh, the same we also have compare memory with the X register and compare memory with the Y register and we'll go into more detail in further videos for these as well. Once you've done your comparing, you'll need to be able to do some other instructions like branch instructions. So there is a set of branch instructions based on the process register or status register status. So we have branch on carry clear, which means that it will branch if the carry, the, the carry flag is clear. We also have branch if carry set and that does ex that exactly the opposite, it will branch if the carry is set. We also have a branch if z result zero, which is commonly known as branch if equal, and we have branch if result is not zero, which is commonly known as branch is not equal. We have also a branch if the result is minus, and a branch if the result is pot, uh, plus, and also we have a branch on the overflow flag if it's branch if clear or branch if the overflow is set and these eight branches can be used di in direct um, after any of the instructions because it will just look at the status register and branch if it is we can also manipulate the process or status register we can clear the carry flag and set it we can clear the de clear decimal mode or set decimal mode and I'll, we'll do a, a, a video about de, uh, decimal mode later on. We can clear the interrupt flag and set it. That allows us to disable it and re-enable it. The interrupt so we can change it if we wanted to. And we can only clear the overflow flag. We also have a set of jump instructions. So there's the standard jump to a new location. 
there is jump to a subroutine and jump to a break routine uh, an interrupt routine which is the break we also can return from the subroutine and return from an interrupt and then the last uh, groupings are uh, stack operations and these allow us to push the accumulator onto the stack and pull it so we can also push the process register onto the stack and take it off and we can also transfer the X register to the stack pointer and transfer the stack pointer to the X register so if you wanted to manipulate the stack pointer in any way we can do that and then the final one is the no op instruction and this allows us to put um, no ops in code if we want to it's like a like a rem statement it, run, it doesn't do a thing on top of these instructions we have things called address modes now not all the instructions use all these address modes and we will go through each instruction and its address modes in the next video but these are the standard address modes so we've got um, the absolute address mode which allows us to talk absolutely to a memory location and that memory location only we also have um, communica communicating with a, an absolute address but then indexed by X so that allows us to say talk to 0200 and if X is 10 then it adds 10 to that 200 so it would be 0210 we've got the same with the Y register as well so we can do the same with that immediate is not even talking to memory it's saying um, do with the number I'm providing in the code so this is the number and that's what it means by immediate implied allows us to imply it, it, it allows you to run a, a command with no addressing mode so uh, typically would be like clear clear the carry or um, increase X by one because they are just opcodes with no um, addressing modes implied so th that would be an, an implied instruction we've got indirect addressing mode and this basically allows you to put a, um, a location in memory so we could have a location with at 0200 which would um, have um, FFEO in there in the two bytes and you could actually jump to 02, the 0200 location the CPU the 6502 will then read that memory location and say ah this is FFEO and then jump to that location so it's an indirect jump and it allows you to um, jump to make that 0200 memory block um, go, jump to different places depending on the program we also have um, indirect zero page indexing so this allows you to talk to the zero page so let's say CO but we can index it by X so it would actually say right I want to talk to C memory location CO and X is 2 so it add 2 to CO so it actually looks at the memory re register C2 now the difference one with the next one with Y uh, is that we tell it to look at CO it then looks at the memory location CO and C1, C1 to find out the memory location which could be say 0400 and then adds Y to it so if Y is 10 it would then be 0410 and it would look in that memory location now relative address mode is mainly used for branching and this allows you to um, specify how many bytes forward or how many bytes backwards that you want to jump so if you had a relative mode of 2 it would jump 2 bytes in front or if you had a relative mode of FC that would jump 2 bytes back or 3 bytes back I think we also have zero page addressing mode which basically is a, sh a quick way of addressing the zip from 0000 to 00FF and the fact you don't have to specify the, the leading zeros it means that you're only using two bytes in memory rather than three we also have zero, be um, zero page X um, indexing so if you want to talk to DO and X is three then it would actually look at 
DO3, uh, D3 and the same with the Y register. So they're the 12 addressing modes that are uh, used with the instruction set that I've just um, described. And what we will do in the next video, we'll look a bit closer at each, each one of those instruction sets and their corresponding addressing modes that go with it. So until then, I will see you at the next video. See ya. Bye.